The Narmer palette, also known as the Great Heracompolis palette or the palette of Narmer, is a significant Egyptian archaeological find dating from about the 31st century BC. The tablet is thought by some to depict the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt under the King Narmer. On one side, the king is depicted with the bold white crown of Upper Egypt. The other side depicts the king wearing the level red crown of Lower Egypt. The Narmer palette provides one of the earliest known depictions of an Egyptian king. The palette is made from silt stone and is approximately 64 centimeters by 42 centimeters. It is shield-shaped ceremonial. The stone has often been wrongly identified in the past as being slate or schist. Slate is layered and prone to flaking, and schist is a metamorphic rock containing large randomly distributed mineral grains. Both sides of the palette are decorated, carved in raised relief at the top of both sides are the central schist bearing the robust symbols Anar, Catfish, and Mir, Chisel, and Side, being the phonetic representation of Narmer's name. The palette shows the typical Egyptian convention for important figures in painting and reliefs of showing the striding legs and the head in profile, but the torso as from the front. The canon of body proportion based on the fist measured across the knuckles with 18 fists from the ground to the hairline on the forehead is also already established. As on the other side, two human-faced bovine heads thought to represent the patron cow goddess Bet flank the sheikhs. The goddess Bet is, as she often was, shown in portrait rather than in profile, as in traditional and Egyptian relief carving. Hathor, who shared many of Bet's characteristics, is often depicted in a similar manner. A large picture in the center of the palette depicts Narmer wielding a mace wearing the white crown, the white crown of Upper Egypt, whose symbol was a flowering lotus. On the left of the king is a man bearing the king's sandals, flanked by a rosette symbol. To the right of the king is a kneeling prisoner who is about to be struck by the king. A pair of symbols appear next to his head, perhaps indicating his name or indicating the region where he was from. Above the prisoner is a falcon, representing Horus, perched above a set of papyrus flowers, the symbol of Lower Egypt. In his talons, he holds a rope-like object, which represents the nose of a man's head that also emerges from the papyrus flowers, perhaps indicating that he is drawing life from the head. Below the king's feet is a third section depicting two naked bearded men. They are either running or meant to be seen as sprawling dead upon the ground. Appearing to the left of the head of each man is a hieroglyphic sign. The, f the first of a walled town, the second type of a knot. De probably de indicating the name of a defeated town. Below the bovine heads is what appears to be a procession. Narmer is depicted at nearly the full height of the register, emphasizing his godlike status in an artistic practice called hierarchical scale, shown wearing the red crown of Lower Egypt, whose symbol was papyrus. He holds a mace and a flail, two traditional symbols of kingship. To his right are the hieroglyphic symbols for his name, though not contained with a stair. Behind him is his sandal bearer, whose name may be represented by the rosette appearing adjacent to his head, and a second re rectangular symbol is that has that has no clear interpretation, but which has been suggested may represent a town or a citadel. Immediately in front of the pharaoh is a long-haired man, accompanied by a pair of hieroglyphs that have been interpreted as the, his name, Shet. This assumes that these symbols had the same phonetic value used in later hieroglyphic writing. Before this man are four standard bearers, holding aloft an animal skin, a dog, and two falcons. Below the procession, two men are holding ropes tied to the outstretched, intertwining necks of two serapards confronting each other. The serapard is a mythological creature whose name is a portmanteau of the words serpent and leopard though the spotless beast with a tough tail more closely resembles a lioness. The circle formed by their curving necks is the central part of the palette, which is the area where cosmetics would have been ground. The object itself is a monumental version of a type of daily use item commonly found in pre-dynastic period. Palettes were generally flat, minimally decorated stone objects 
is for grinding and mixing minerals for cosmetics. Dark eyeliner was an essential aspect of life in the sun-drenched region. Like the dark streaks placed under the eyes of modern athletes, black cosmetics around the eyes served to reduce glare. Basic cosmetic palettes were among the typical grave goods found during the er this early era. In addition to these simple, purely functional palettes, however, there were also a number of larger, far more elaborate palettes created in this period. These objects still served the function of being ground for grinding and mixing products, but they were also carefully carved with relief, sc relief sculpture. Many of the earlier palettes display animals, some real, some fantastic, while later examples, like the Narmer palette, focus on human actions. The palette of Narmer was discovered in 1989 by James Quibble and Frederick Green. It was found with a collection of other objects that had been used for ceremonial purposes and then ritually buried within the temple at Hyrcanopolis. The main deposit at Hyrcanopolis, where the Narmer palette was discovered, contained many hundreds of objects, including a number of large relief-covered ceremonial mace heads, ivory statuettes, carved knife handles, figurines of scorpions and ivory and other animals, stone vessels, and a second elaborately decorated palette known as the Two Dogs Palette.